Welcome to the Munif Ali Podcast. I'm your host, Munif. Each Monday on this show, I bring you unfiltered discussions on the latest trends in finance, real estate, and crypto, and personal development to help you achieve your utmost potential. If you want to learn how to be the best and be financially free, this is the place to be. So let's get it started. I know we're constantly being bombarded by get rich quick. And when I was growing up, there was a lot of infomercials out there, buy this system, buy that system. Nothing's changed. Now it's on the internet and you're constantly being bombarded by some a-hole, snake oil salesman, fake guru type of dude telling you, hey, I could be the magic pill for you. But it is all about the way we think and process what wealth is and how to achieve it. So in this particular video, I'm gonna talk about all the conditionings that we go through, whether it's society, whether it's community, whether it's the way our government wants us to think, or whether it's the media. There are some conditionings that we go through. There are some ways that we have started to think about wealth that are affecting the way we manage our money. I'm your host, Munif Ali. I'm a self-made multimillionaire who built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars of sales. If you want to become financially independent, you've come to the right place. We discuss unfiltered opinions and tips about the latest trends in the world of finance and personal development. See, when I was growing up, my mom had this immigrant mentality about saving money. And because she went through a period in her life where we didn't have a lot, basically wore hand-me-downs. I was wearing bell bottoms in the 80s and bell bottoms were out in the 70s. So you can imagine what going to school in the projects with a decade old fashion. Yeah, that made me learn how to fight pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, that made me fight, learn how to fight pretty quickly. And I also learned a whole lot about being able to defend yourself and having this mentality of constantly trying to keep up with others. I remember a time where I wanted a pair of Nikes so bad and I came home and I talked to my mom, I want a pair of Nikes so bad. And she said, why? She couldn't understand the concept. Um, why? Why can't you just buy another pair of sneakers? Why does it have to have that sign? She couldn't get it. And when she found out the price, I think there were $40 for a pair of Air Jordans back in the 80s and she just refused. She absolutely refused. So I started to work. And when I started to work, I started to bring home more money than I had. And obviously I started to you know, buy a lot of stuff, you know, but she had a, a few conversations with me about that mindset of, uh, you know, not having and that immigrant mindset of seeing your cup completely full. Now, there were definitely obstacles along the way. You know, she was, you know, a woman of color, blue, black, illiterate, didn't have any formal training, any one of those things. But I'll tell you, she would teach me things like, look, you know, you're buying this shirt at retail, but at a thrift store, it's like 99 cents. And I was always very, very embarrassed about going to a thrift store or any one of those things. But in hindsight, now look, people are thrifting and doing all kinds of stuff. But for me, it was that not having in the beginning of my life where I kind of grew into being more of a consumer. And it took me a full 180 degrees to come back around to understand the value of wealth. Once I became a millionaire in my 20s, I started to really look back what my mindset was. And for a lot of people, that consumer mindset is getting more and more established in our communities. And so let's talk about some of the ways that you can win this back and take the programming out that we have. So a lot of people will tell you that wealth is all about action, action, action. And I will say, you got to think back to where your mindset about money is as well. Now, my mom was always too proud to be on welfare, but it was okay for us to stand in welfare lines sometimes to get food. And 
My mom would always say, you know, we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to stand in line for the cheese or the butter or whatever it was. But I want you to get an extra one for Mrs. So-and-so. I want you to, you know, she would sometimes get me to get on a bus just to get off at the next stop so that I can have a transfer. So because it would cost cheaper for a a child than than an adult. And she was always too proud to get a helping hand along the way. And so my mindset about money um, came from really thinking about each dollar and being responsible for each dollar spent. Now, you can classify that as cheap or frugal or a millionaire downloading. And that's what I, that's what I'll say. It's really, really important what your mindset about money is because the fact of the matter is if you're going to think in poverty, if you always are saying to yourself, I can't afford it rather than how can I afford this? You know, I want that lavish, beautiful car. Anyone in America can go apply for credit and get it. But how can you truly afford to have it? Not I can't, but how can I, right? And you start to think along the lines of what actions do I need to take? So you start developing through mindset, you're going to naturally develop the next stage. It's not just about the action, it's about the mindset. And now let's talk about planning all of this out. It's essential you understand that your act, it's essential that you understand that you have these goals so that you understand why you want this. Why is it necessary for you to drive a fancy car around when most of your relatives, you know, are impoverished or why is it important for you to have the biggest house? What internal need is there for showing people or having wealth? And the more you want to break that down, the better it is because we all admire successful people for one reason or another. It's because they make us feel good or they make us feel bad about how we are and what stage we are. And more and more social media develops this habit of us getting our dopamine fixed by watching others succeed. But in the end, we don't feel so good about our own lives. Now, in complete transparency, I had sold billions of dollars in business. In complete transparency, my companies that I am a part of have sold billions of dollars in sales alone, yet I was a relatively unknown in the market because I was always backstage behind my companies. And I'm watching a lot of people that I personally know that are on social media showcasing their lives, but because I personally know them, I know their finances aren't up to par. So do you want to project wealth or do you want to, or do you want to harness wealth? It's really important that you figure that out and the earlier, the better. Think about where you are and if you live in the United States or the Western world, sky is really the limit and I know that it's not a perfect place and I know there it's fraught with issues and problems and all of those things. Why I bring up the immigrant mindset is that people that come from other places have this desire to do as good as possible and to obtain whatever they can get. Now, for those of us that are from here, how do we get that mindset? Well, you don't have to be an immigrant to have that mindset, but you have to develop that drive by having that plan and knowing it's not resources, but it's more like resourcefulness that keeps us from getting to our highest selves. It goes back to the conversations that you're having with yourself and others. If you constantly think from an impoverished mind, then your actions will be that of an impoverished person. Now, I know that we're talking about conditioning. I know we're talking about conditioning, so I'm going to go into my next thing, the boogeyman. Now, with the Industrial Revolution, the whole tactic was to create people who were work-minded, who can then work for, you know, multinational companies and go in and punch the clock and be like a, you know, conveyor belt of workers and you constantly have a workforce, right? I understand that, but I don't want you to think in terms of the boogeyman, the man, the system, some type of conspiracy out there that is keeping you from wealth. Yes, there are systems designed out there to get more people to be workers and to constantly be attached to debt. And all of these programmings are definitely out there. Without 
thinking the conspiracy theory, I want you to understand your mindset has to be, your mindset has to be that regardless of whatever systems you see or you don't see, you can establish wealth by not being, by not being in the mindset of blaming someone else. But instead of pointing, turn that finger around and say, what can I do? And having that understanding of control that you have everything you need to be able to make conscious, deliberate decisions about your wealth is important. So no boogeyman, understand that you ultimately are responsible, whether there are temptations out there or not to make you a consumer. Once you get that power back, you in essence have inherited the You, in essence, have inherited the fact that you can change whatever financial situation you are in right now. Hi, this is Munif Ali, and welcome to my podcast. If you want to become wealthier and become limitless, this podcast is for you. In each episode, I'll be helping you on your journey of personal development and financial independence. We'll be discussing the latest trends in finance, in investing, and in real estate, and ways to become successful. Make sure you follow me on YouTube and across all the social media platforms so you can get your hands on real value. Let's talk about working hard as the only means to success and wealth. It's not so. There are plenty of people who will work themselves to death and never make what a CEO of a company is making. So it's not always about hard work. Yes, hard work is a factor that plays into a lot of things. But just working hard alone is not going to make you wealthy unless you make conscious decisions about the money that you make. Let's talk about the world not being fair. Look, the world is not fair. And the sooner you understand that, I know that all men and women are created equal and all of that stuff, but the world is not a fair place, right? You yourself probably hold some amount of resistance to one thing or another. You probably have your personal feelings, whether you like the blue team or the red team or you don't like this or that. The world is not a fair place. And the sooner we get to understand and realize that, the better it is. Like we're trying to make the world a better place, but it will take a while, right? It doesn't matter what your skin color, your sexual orientation. It doesn't matter where you come from, the language you speak, whether you speak with an accent or not. The faster you understand it's not fair play, And it's not always going to be fair. And it doesn't matter if you're a winner on one side or you're born with a silver spoon. There is an example for you to see right now in this modern world of someone that looks just like you or has the same issues as you or has is from the same type of socioeconomic situation as yourself that has made it. The proof is there. So learn to understand the world's not fair. It's never going to be fair totally. We're trying to improve it, but it doesn't matter what deck or what hand you've been played. You've got to learn to understand. You've got to move the needle forward constantly. You might have to work twice as hard as someone else. You might have to work three times as hard as someone else just to live in the same neighborhood as them. But the fact of the matter is, the, more you, the faster you understand the world's not fair and that you might have to do more push-ups just to get the same muscle someone else has, oh well. One, one of the ways that people are conditioned to be poor is that constantly thinking about the problems rather than the solutions. And the moment you start to make that mental shift, you're a solution-oriented person, not just a problem. A impoverished poor person will always see a problem. I want you to always think, and regardless if you make it to a millionaire or not, if you see your life as a problem solver rather than a problem creator or someone who brings up problems, the wealthier you feel because wealth is not just about the cheddar. It's also about the abundance of how you view your life. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure that you leave a rating on my podcast as it will help us continue this show. Share this with your friends and family so I can reach out to more people and help them reach their goals in life. I hope that you could join us on the next episode of the Munif Ali podcast. So catch you soon.